Welcome students to chemistry concept. This is Pankaj Singh and now we are going to talk about bond parameters which include bond length, bond angle and bond order. Okay, first of all bond length as the name suggests it is actually length of a bond and let's say there are two atoms A and B forming a bond then the distance between centers of the nucleus of the two bonded atom is called bond length okay and as you can see it will include whatever the space or interatomic space is present there now if have a look at the definition bond length is defined as the equilibrium distance between the nucleus of the two bonded atoms in a molecule what is meaning of this equilibrium distance actually what happens that if there are two bonded atoms it's not like they're touching one another because whenever they come very close the electronic cloud of both the atoms starts repelling and whenever they go too far bond breaks so there must be a minimum distance at which the two atoms are present at that minimum distance at which the bond is present there and also repulsion is minimum is called equilibrium distance so there is always some distance between the two bonded atoms they are not touching one another because of ele inter electronic repulsion and including that distance and the two radiuses whatever is the distance between the center of the nucleus of the two bonded atom is called bond length and obviously this bond length would be greater than the sum of radiuses of the two atoms let's say this is r1 this is r2 because always they are present the two atoms are present at some uh, we can say a equilibrium distance let's say I call it l then the bond length would be r1 radius of the first atom plus r dash radius of the second atom plus l whatever is that equilibrium distance okay now again uh, when we are talking about radius radius may be of different type the first is covalent radius and obviously this is for those atoms which form covalent bonds okay in case of covalent bonds the contribution of each atom is called covalent radius and why we are saying so why we are defining a covalent radius differently because we know covalent bond we will we'll st be studying about this later that covalent bond is formed by overlapping of the orbitals and when the when orbitals are overlapping then obviously the sum of the two radiuses uh, uh, that means the radius has to be defined in a different way and in this case when the, the atoms are bonded with, uh, through covalent bond then whatever is the effective radius is called covalent radius and co so here it is written that covalent radius is half of the distance between the two similar atoms joined by a covalent bond what does it mean let's say this was the first atom a this is the second atom b then this is the bond length and this is the covalent radius because in this case in this case atomic orbitals are overlapping in the previous case there was some difference there was some distance between the two atoms but in case of covalent bond the atoms are overlapping orbitals are overlapping so we in this case we can say that actually that the covalent radius is somewhat less than the actual radius of an atom now now there is another case what if an atom is not bonded because whatever the type of radius we have defined so far that was for a bonded atom what if an atom is not bonded like in case of helium argon neon in all these cases atoms are not bonded okay they are separate they are not joined through any bond again 
So in that case, we define van der Waal radius. Van der Waal radius represents overall size of an atom, which includes its valence shell in a non-bonded situation. In this case, simply the radius is the distance between center of the nucleus to the outermost shell. Or there is another way to define it. Uh, if the atom is, let's say, bonded, if I talk about uh, carbon monoxide and carbon monoxide, this is carbon, this is oxygen, another carbon, another oxygen. In this case, if I want to find out uh, the van der Waal radius of carbon, then what I'll be doing. It is, let's say this was carbon, this was oxygen, this is carbon, this is oxygen. In that case, center of carbon atom of one molecule, center of carbon atom of another molecule, the distance between the two and its half. This is called van der Waal radius. Why van der Waal radius? Because these two carbons are not bonded to one another. They are present in separate molecules. And in that case, the van der Waal radius is half of the distance between two similar atoms in separate molecules in a solid. Here is the example. Now, this represents covalent radius and this represents van der Waal radius. Okay, if the atoms are bonded, present in the same molecule covalent radius if the atoms are not bonded or they are present in separate molecule the radius is van der Waal radius definition is same that is the half of distance between nucleus of the two atoms bond angle obviously as the name suggests bond angle means angle between bonds simply and what is bond so angle between the orbitals containing bonding electron that means bond pair around the central atom in a molecule is called bond angle and it is represented in degree and it can only be determined experimentally now you can see here there is a water molecule and whatever is the angle between two bonded atom to two bonds is bond angle similarly in case of carbon dioxide this is the bond angle in case of methane the angle between two bonds is called bond angle okay and it is represented in degree okay now bond angle is affected strongly by presence of a lone pair which we'll be studying later when we'll talk about valence shell electron pair repulsion theory but here we need to know what is bond angle bond angle is simply angle between two bonds next is bond order now this is also a technical term used for a very simple thing bond order means if it is a single bond bond order is 1 if it is a double bond bond order is 2 if it is a triple bond bond order is 3 simply more than 3 bond, bond order doesn't exist okay so obviously it is only for covalent bonds whatever is the number of bonds present between two atoms Two covalently bonded atom is called bond order. So in Lewis structure of a covalent bond, the bond order is given by number of bonds between the two atoms in a molecule. That's it. Similarly, if we, if we talk about carbon dioxide, bond order is 2. If I talk about a nitrogen molecule and triple bond and bond order is 3. If I talk about oxygen molecule O2, bond order is 2. That's it. I hope these things were clear to you. If not, you can always ask in our comment section. And please stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe for more videos of organic, inorganic and physical chemistry. Thank you.